Really? Hi, Hi everyone. How are you doing? I can hear you. Good. I can see you. Maybe you should. Uh, can, can you hear me? Sharing. Yes, I can. And uh, is, is the audio good? Are audio good? No, it's good. Yes, it's cool. Just share your screen. Yeah, let me share, share screen. Yeah, I can see your slides. Cool. All right. So uh, Rudy Matila will uh, now give his presentation on express applications of dynamically typed Haskell expressions. Go ahead, Rudy. Okay, uh, th thanks for the introduction, Julian. Uh, so hi, hi everyone, my name is Rudy. Um, I'm going to present my paper uh, at the Haskell Symposium 2021 uh, titled Express Applications of Dynamically Typed Haskell Expressions. And I'm not currently affiliated to any company or university and this work was developed indefinitely. So uh, this work is about a Haskell library called Express which allows us to manipulate applications of dynamically typed Haskell expressions. This library is available in Hackage and can be installed as usual with command install and imported with uh, import data experts. But what is it about? Well, uh, the, the Express library can be compared with the data dynamic library. Data dynamic encodes dynamically typed values and data express encodes dynamically typed expressions. And Express is itself implemented as a wrapper around data dynamic that extends it with uh, several features, such as pretty printing, delayed evaluation of applications, support for variables, and expression matching. And we'll see that these extensions uh, allow uh, Express to be applied in, in a few surprising applications, such as conjecture and specifications, property testing, and program synthesis. Now let's take a look at, uh, 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 before we, we look at the, the, the example applications, let's take a look at the library itself at Express. And let's start with the representation of expressions. So at the current library, we have the expert type, which represents a, a, a dynamically typed Haskell expression. And each expert is either a terminal value or an application between experts. And terminal values are encoded both as a string representation for bridge printing and partner match and as a dynamic value, which can be later, uh, pulled back into a regular Haskell value. To construct uh, terminal values, we can use the value smart constructor. And uh, the value smart constructor takes a string, a, 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 a string representation, an actual Haskell value, and returns an expert. And we can also construct terminal values with the vol smart constructor, which is for show instances which takes, simply takes a Haskell value and returns an expert. Let's see the working on GHCI to, to, to maybe clarify how they work. Here's a definition of a value one, which is an encoding of the value one of type int as an expert. If I check the type of one in GHCI, it will say expert because it is of the expert type. However, if I evaluate one on, on GHCI, I'll see one of type int, and that is due to the show instance of experts which pretty prints them as the, the uh, string encoding of the value paired with the type of the value. Here, I'm encoding a function as an expert, as a terminal expert. Here, here's the plus function, uh, and I encode it as value string plus, and then plus bound to the int argument type. If I check the type of plus, again, it's an expert, but if I, I, I evaluate it on GTI, I get a pretty printed version of it, which is again due to the show instance of experts. And I can take our previous of the value, find values plus and one and apply them to each other. So apply plus to one and I get uh, the one plus section of type int to int. And I can further apply to another one to get the value one plus one of type int. Yeah, sorry, to get the expression one plus one of type int. And Express also provides a function called evaluate, which is able to pull back uh, an actual Haskell value from the expression. And here I'm evaluating plus apply to one, apply to one at the type int. And I get the two value because one plus one is two. And it's a maybe here because it returns nothing when the type doesn't match and returns just a value when the types do match. Let's take a look at another simple example, heterogeneous lists. So 
Um, we can def dec declare a heterogeneous list of values using express uh, by doing like so, access of type list of expert. And then we declare each value in the list like before. So for example, here I'm encoding the value true, the Boolean value true as an expert. And here I don't need to, to, to bind the type of true because it's already monomorphic. And here I am uh, encoding the values one and two of type int, then the function end, then the function adds. And I can write map evaluate on nexus of type uh, list of maybe int. And I get nothing, just one, just two, nothing, nothing. So that means uh, uh, I'm trying to select the values that are of, of the int type and I get nothing for the values that are not of the int type and I get uh, just uh, the actual int value uh, for values that are of the int type. And Express provides also this other operator here, which is, uh, uh, I call it double dollar or, or dollar dollar. And it applies two expressions and always returns a type correct expression or nothing when the types do not, not match, do not fit together. So here's an example. I'm taking F values from access, the access from the previous slide, and X values from access, and running F uh, double dollar X and, and concatenating the values that are just values. And I get and applied to true, abs applied to one, and abs applied to two. Before we, we look at the, the example applications, let's, let's take a look at another feature of Express, which is encoding variables. Uh, we can create a, a variable represented as an expression uh, in Express using this var smart, smart constructor. It takes a string, which is the name of the variable, and a type representative, A, and returns an expert. This is just a proxy value, although I didn't use a proxy type, but. So here's how we can create, declare a, 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 an expert representing a variable X of type int. I just do var string X, and then pass the, the representative undefined of type int. Here's the same thing for Booleans. So here's a variable P of type Boolean, represented as an expert, and I declare it as var string P, and then an undefined of type, uh, type representative. And of course, uh, I, we can use these variables inside expressions like plus applied to x applied to one, x plus one of type int. Okay, now let's move on to our first example application, which is conjecturing equations based on the results of testing. Our goal is to have a function speculate about of type list of expert to list of expert that given a collection of Haskell symbols encoded as experts, a collection of Haskell functions encoded as experts, such as nil, uh, cons, and, and append. Uh, it prints a bunch of equations about them based on the results of testing. Never mind those equations now. I'll explain, uh, 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 we'll, we'll parse them later on. But let's try to implement this using the Express library. We start with a function called candidate experts from, which will take uh, uh, of type list of expert to list of expert. And we can use it like so, candidate experts from applied to a variable of type uh, uh, x of type int, the value zero, one, and one of type int, and the functions plus and times bound to the int argument type. And what this function will do is it will enumerate those terminal values, x, zero, one, plus, and times. Then it will use the double dollar function to build values of size two, x plus, zero plus, one plus, x times, uh, one times, zero, zero times, etc. And then it will use again the, 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 the double dollar operator to combine values from the previous sizes to make values of size three and so on and so forth up to expressions up to an arbitrary limit of uh, size five, five, five symbols, five uh, definitions. We take those values that, that it generates and we take the cross product of them using this small function here. This is, uh, never mind the code, but this is just taking a cross product between uh, uh, those values uh, using uh, an equation encoded as an expert. And the result, the important thing is the result, which is this. These are candidate equations. These are our candidate equations in, in our application. There are equations here that are, of course, are not true. We return false, but we'll filter them out later. Let's put those equations aside for a moment. And let's take a look at this function grounds here, which takes an expression containing uh, variables and returns a list of ground expressions, which are the expression whose var uh, where variables have been replaced by ground values, by actual values. Let's see an example to make it clear. So here I have the expression not p of type bool, where p is a variable. And if I apply grounds, apply grounds to not p, 
I get not false or not true, which should be, can be assigned to false and to true. Those are the two possible values of Boolean. Here's another example. Uh, uh, grounds apply to plus, apply, apply to x, apply to y. And we get 0 plus 0, 0 plus 1, 1 plus 0, 0 plus minus 1. We get, we get the, the, the possible variations. And we can generate those values using a property-based testing library, such as quick check or link check or feet or any other that, that you, 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 you want to use. I'm using link check here, but you, you, you could, we could have used other, another. But the point is that using grounds, we can implement a function called is true, which takes an, uh, a Boolean expression encoded as an expert and returns a Boolean whether this expression, telling whether this expression is true for an arbitrary number of tests. And here I'm using 60, but we, we could have used another value. So if I say is true plus apply to x, apply to y, uh, is equal to plus apply to y, apply to x, and that is true. Like if, if we run tests, there's no, no way to falsify that. However, if I run is true uh, that plus apply to x, apply to y is the same as plus apply to x, apply to x, and that is not true, that is falsifiable, and it, will, it, it can find it uh, using tests and it will return false. Well, what can we do with, what, what can, can we do with that? We can now get back to our goal, spec, the speculate about function, and we can just put the pieces together. We start with the candidate equations from our basic symbols. Then we filter those that are true using our function is true that we just defined. Then we discard later equations that are er instances of earlier equations using this function is instance of, which I won't have time to describe here, but it's part of the express library. It just does matching between expressions. And of course, we could refine this function further with a few more lines, but I won't have time to explain those. And then we can write speculate about, and then pass the symbols encoded as expert. Here's Neil, Collins, and append. And we get these equations in a list and x uh, append, appended to nil is equal to x's. And then a couple of interesting ones are, are the two later ones here. This is the recursive case in the definition of append. And this is uh, uh, the associativity of append. And it does that in less than one second. It's pretty quick to report those, those, those equations. And of course, those are conjectures. I mean, the, these are true, but there could be cases where, where they are not because this is based on the results of testing. So, so you should analyze those and, and see which are true and which are not manually. Here's another example, equations about zero plus an abs. And it prints a bunch of equations such that abs is idempotent, uh, that plus is commutative and uh, plus is associative. And here's the entire code. The, this is the full code of the application that does this. And uh, I know the font is small and the point is not for you to read this, but the point is that using Express, we can build an equational generator 66 lines. There are, of course, several details and limitations that I, I, I omitted here, but those are discussed in the paper. Okay, now let's take a look at another feature of Express, which is uh, support for deeply encoding values as applications of constructors. So the Express library has this Express type class, which has this function here. That the important part here is the expert function, which takes a Haskell value A, and returns an expert, which encodes this value, uh, deeply encodes these values uh, uh, as applications of constructors. Let's see with examples how that works. So for uh, atomic types like Booleans, uh, expert is just equal to vol, the vol we defined earlier in, 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 in the presentation. Same thing for ints, which are also atomic, you can break them down, so expert is equal to vol. However, for types which have constructors, such as pairs, here's the instance for, for, for pairs AB, uh, and we can uh, we can read this as the deep encoding of the pair x y is the pair constructor applied to the deep encoding of x applied to the deep encoding of y, and this funky operator here is just a type binding just to select it, select the pair constructor at the correct type. Here is another example: uh, uh, the instance for lists. So uh, the deep encoding of a list access is. Uh, just the actual list, if it's new, if it's the empty list, you just encode the, the new constructor. However, if the list is, is, has a head Y and, and, a, and a tail Ys, uh, the deep encoding is the, pair const uh, the list constructor applied to the deep encoding of the head of the list applied to the deep encoding of the tail of the list. But what can we do? With, what can we do with this? And we can do the second example application, which is generalizing counterexamples of property-based testing. 
let me do a quick review of property-based testing. Um, so property-based testing is a method of testing that instead of testing a, a specific input and output cases, you, you delegate the generation, of, the generation of tests to a library or tool. And here I'm writing that for any access you give me, applying sort, sort of access is the same as sort of access. And for, for a correct implementation of sort, uh, usually the tools we report test fast because you can't falsify it if it's correct and the implementation is correct. However, here's an example where the property is wrong. So for any access, the length of nub of access is the same as length of access. And that is obviously false because no nub uh, uh, discards repeated elements. So, and, and usually property-based testing tools report a counterexample such as, such as this, uh, zero, the list zero, zero, this falsifies this property. However, what if we could extend this information that uh, property-based testing tools give and also report a generalization of the counter example we got? So instead of saying that the property fails just for the list 00, zero we say that it not only fails for this 00, zero, but also for any list of the form x cons x cons x's, which is any list where the two uh, starting elements are the same. We can do that using Express. We take our counter example 00, zero here we make a deep encoding of it, which will return this funky uh, 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 expert representation here. But never mind that, it, that just means a zero cons zero cons nil encoded as an expert. And we pass that to a candidate generalizations function, which will provide us with candidate generalizations by replacing parts of this with variables. Like so, it will, it will basically list the values in this lattice from most general to least general. And th th these are made by replacing uh, values with variables in the middle of the expression. The function that does this is short, but there, there will be no time to detail it in this talk. Uh, but the point is that it, 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 do it does, it's quite short and does produce those, those values here. And with that function, we can write this function counter example in generalizations that tests the property regularly with a property-based testing tool then generalizes uh, uh, the counterexample using this pattern here. So it takes all the candidate generalizations and selects those that always falsify the property for a, uh, an arbitrary number of test values, a, a co configured maximum number of test values. And this function with this part here will be able to produce this output with uh, x cons x cons x's uh, uh, here, the generalization of this property here. So, so that any, any counter example of this form will falsify the property. Of course, that's a conjecture. It may not be, be, be true in all cases, but in, in this case it is. Here's another example. Uh, apply check to uh, the pair X and Y, uh, like, sorry, uh, the properties that says that for any pair X and Y, X is different to Y. Uh, we get the results that zero, zero is a counter example. And also that the property fails for any pair of the form x, x, uh, where the value is repeated. Hope that's clear. Here's the entire code of the application that generalizes counter example, counter examples. And the point is that using Express, we can build a counter example generalizer in just 51 lines. There are of course several details and several limitations that I can, don't have time to mention here, but those are discussed in the paper. Now let's take a look at our last example application, which is which is synthesizing functions that match a set of argument result pairs. Here's a partial definition of a square function in Haskell. Square of one is one, square of two is four, square of three is nine, square of four is 16. And this only works for those four argument values. And let's say I collect a bunch of primitives that I think could be useful in an, in an implementation of a fully defined square function. And the values that I choose were zero, one, plus and times. And if I write synthesize square with the primitives, this function prints square of x is equal to x times x. Here's another example. Here's a factorial only defined for four values, uh, one, two, three, and four, which are one, two, six, and 24. I use the same primitives as before, but I also add full dar and, and I'm from two. And I write, Synthesize factorial with those primitives. And then 
the total print factor of x is equal to the product of the values 1 through x. Unfortunately, I won't have time to detail this application, but its code is very short. Here's, here's it in its entirety. So using Express, we can build a functional synthesizer in 66 lines. Th th this, this functional synthesizer is very limited. Uh, there, there are several limitations and there are several details I've omitted, and those are discussed in the paper. And hopefully now the title of the, the, the talk is clear now. Uh, it's, it's clear now what I mean by applications of dynamically typed Haskell expressions, because it's, it's, it's sort of a library that uh, uh, has this, this bunch of features, but they, and, and they are useful in, in different applications and, and it's, it's, really, it's sort of hard to describe without showing the, the actual examples. This is the best I could come up with applications of dynamically typed Haskell expressions. But now you may ask me, uh, th th those, those applications were, were just a toy and example, uh, short examples. Uh, but you, you, you may ask me, is Express useful in the implementation of real full featured libraries? And there's this, yes, I think so, I think so. And to prove that, uh, let me tell you a story. Back in 2017, I worked in the creation of two libraries uh, with my co-author at the time, my supervisor at the time, Colin Ransman, which were Speculate and Extrapolate. And Speculate is a tool that generates equations based on the results of testing, just like our first example application. And Extrapolate is a tool that generalizes counterexamples, just like our second example application. And back then, Express didn't exist. I hadn't implemented it yet. And since then, I refactored both Speculate and Extrapolate to use Express instead as the engine to, to manipulate expressions. And the result was that I was able to reduce, reduce the number of lines of code by 25% in those two tools. So objectively, those real full-featured libraries have less lines of code. And as a more subjective measure, this is more uh, subjective, the code is now more elegant, organized, and easier to maintain. And there was no negative performance impact, and I have benchmarks to prove that, but those are detailed in the paper. And there's more on paper, uh, comparison with other expression codings, comparison with data dynamic, comparison with template Haskell and why Express is not as similar as it seems, table compare features, etc. cetera. And that's future work. I'm currently working on, 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 on improving the synthesizing functional examples and turning it into a full featured library. That's one of my, my, my goals currently. And I think that this maybe could, could be applied to mutation testing or comparison testing and maybe something else that I haven't thought of because I think this is pretty generic. It can be applied to other stuff. Um, thank you for taking the time to watch watching my talk, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. So I'll take the speaker. Uh, there are a few questions lined up, and I'm going to show. I'm going to take uh, the first question asked to the stage. Uh, the, sorry, I'm going to put, take the question to the stage, and I think I'll invite uh, Armando to, to ask his own question which has the additional advantage that people on YouTube also know what is being asked and what is being answered. Um, so Armand, yeah. Armando, can you ask your question to the speaker? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, really, uh, really cool talk. Uh, so my question, and I, I guess you maybe uh, approached this in the paper, but what I want to ask is, are you familiar with QuickSpec? It's a, it's a tool that also tries to generate uh, equational laws for free. You give it a bunch of, of functions and and it just tries to generate equational laws and that you can use in property-based testing. And I, I asked you if you have used this to generate or find equational laws for free in testing, but I guess uh, you did just uh, said that in your presentation. Uh, but did, do you compare your approach with quick specs? Um, could you talk about that? So um, uh, let me try to sum sum summarize that. Get some, some audio feedback. So so uh, yes, I, I I I'm I am aware of QuickSpec and I have used it uh, before in, in in the past. And actually, was was QuickSpec was one of the, the the tools that inspired me to create Speculate, which is the other tool I mentioned. And uh, I I have comp uh, there, there is a paper about Speculate, which is this other tool I made, which does compare its results with QuickSpec, what, what are the, 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 the performance uh, uh, results between them. Uh, but the, this actual, uh, the, the, the simple example application, the 50 lines one that I showed you in the talk, uh, I haven't done any deep 
uh, performance comparison with uh, a quick spec because it will obviously lose. It's, it's like just a just a small. It's just a, like a a case study, a proof of concept mm -hmm. to show that Express can be can be uh, uh, can be used to write shortly and 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 work as an engine to manipulate expressions. Okay. I, I yeah, hope that answers this question. Yeah, definitely. Thank you really once again, and thank thank you, Julian, for welcoming me on stage. Okay, I'll kindly remove you from the stage. And Mark, your question is answered. So there's another question by uh, Yuji Yamamoto. I'm first on the show on stage, and then I'm going to invite Yui. <coughs> that uh, can you, can you ask a question, please? Okay. Uh, why does the ver function receive an antifine as a type proxy instead of a proxy or using type applications? Uh, uh, the, the answer is pretty short. It's, it's just because of backwards compatibility. So, so mm -hmm. it's 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 more backwards compatible to just use uh, uh, the undefined value because prox proxy was defined at, at a given JHC version. I wanted to support earlier uh, versions, but I, we could have used the proxy there. Uh, there's no reason why a, a proxy could could couldn't have been used. Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, thank, thanks for your question. Thank you. Can I re kind of remove Yuji from the stage? And Marcus has answered. Are there any other questions at this time? Let's see in the chat if there's anything. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything there. So if you have any questions, you can still pose them. Ah, so no one has a question. I'm going to show it on stage and invite him to the stage to pose his question. So don't go ahead. Um, hello, thanks for the amazing talk. Just curious if the synthesis part works by enumerating all the options or does something else. It's it's uh, this this simple version I presented in the talk. It works just by enumerating. It's it's brute force enumeration, and it has no pruning at all, and, and it doesn't scale well. Like like if, if you give it four, or six symbols, eight symbols, it can generate small functions, but if you give it twelve or, or twenty symbols, it, it it will blow up and 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 not produce an output. It will be killed by the OOM killer or 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 even. Uh, Take too long to, to, to run. So, so it's it's just brute force enumeration, and and that, 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 that's it. But I'm 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 working currently on a on another tool that tries to prune and and, and does some, some something more fancy. But th this this one in the talk is is just brute force enumeration. Thank so you. Thanks, thanks for the question. Okay, and kind of remove the silk known from the stage and Marcus' question is answered. Um, <clears throat> so I think uh, we can thank you again for, for answering the questions and giving your presentation. Thanks. And uh, then I'll uninvite you from the stage kindly to invite oh. the next speaker for today.